Hey, I just got done talking to Brittany Slaves from Unleash the Archers. It was a nice, quick interview. Uh, we covered a lot of the topics of the album, the recording process, all this thing, all the things I like to know about. So please enjoy it. Here's a clip of the band and some of the music they do. Do yourself a favor, look up the lyrics and pay attention to the story because it's very important. It's not necessary to know the story because the music's so good, but if you know it, it's just going to be that much better. Thanks. Hope you enjoy the interview. So I guess we can, uh, we'll get started. It's good to have you back. Thanks. Yeah. Good to be here. Seen a lot of interviews. Started to watch one. I'm like, I don't want to ask a bunch of stuff you already heard, but then I also didn't want to hear answers to things I wanted to know about, you know? (laughs) Uh, The eternal struggle. (laughs) Right, right, right. Now you guys, are you you still on tour or you just finish up? No, no, we haven't been on tour. We just did one off little festival in in Chicago a couple weeks ago. And then uh, it's, it's starting up here next weekend is a hometown release show. And then the weekend after that is, a Vancouver release show, and then um, then we hit the road to Australia and New Zealand. Australia and New Zealand. And you haven't been there, right? No. <laughs> That's going to be Very awesome. Exciting. Yes. Yeah. It's going to be rad. Well, uh, let's see. Most important, how how's Lenny doing? <laughs> she's great. Yeah. <laughs> she's uh, she's walking and talking and, and uh, chattering up a storm. That's for sure. <laughs> Fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, day before, I, I took the whole album. Phantom, I listened to the whole thing with the lyrics. I took notes. I have questions sure. about the story and then what, what's going on. Sounds good. I like having discussions, you know, as opposed to just a list of questions. Sure. Maybe I should just ask right away. Okay. <laughs> okay. So. Ooh, uh, it's a ghost. <laughs> huh? Oh. It's no, a it's ghost. my dog. <laughs> you got to come in and check it out. Aw. <laughs> Bella. She'll come in and lay down. That's adorable. In the Green and Glass video, the main character in there is Phantoma, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Is Cora the one that's in all white? Yes. Okay. All right. Good. <laughs> You're like, I got that much. <laughs> I got that much. Now, is it, um, I guess I'll just, okay. Was it going to be? Korra versus the humans, and Phantoma tried to warn the humans, but they cast her out, so Phantoma just killed everybody? Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Well, yeah, so uh, Phantoma is like, she lives in a computer, right? She's yeah. in a, a warehouse, a hub, and uh, the hub services the biome. And so she watches humanity from afar and, and you know, models herself after them and kind of falls in love with them. and and their lives that they lead. And so she puts herself into the body of an android and, and another droid as well. They escape their, you know, bonds of servitude okay. together. And then they find the collective. They find Korra. And they think that it's going to be this awesome life, you know, living like the humans do together in a, you know, in a, in a, a safe space. Um, and then it turns out that Korra is just like building a, a, an army with a hive mind that wow, okay. so yeah it's just erases their individuality so chorus uh phantom was like uh yeah no that's how i'm not i'm not into that and then of course core is like well okay die <laughs> <laughs> and then phantom <laughs> escapes and goes exactly toward the humans and say there's this like army that's gonna, that wants to totally take out all of humankind and they are like Get out of here. We don't need you. Go back to work. You know, Fatima's like really upset. She doesn't know what to do because she's yeah. like, okay, well, my own kind doesn't want me and humankind doesn't want me. Where do I belong? So then she's kind of like, well, if I'll just, t- the people that don't like me, I'll just take them out. <laughs> <laughs> great, great telling of the story because I, there's a couple times I'm like, oh, I don't know about this. I don't know about that. If I watched the whole, it was like an, the original video before I cut out all my thinking and, and, going duh was like two hours i spent going through the album and so i had all the lyrics pulled up and i'm like i want to know what's going on right and uh it was it was so fun and i want to i want to go back through your other other albums like that too it's like the best way to experience it 
<laughs> but I'm it was, glad you think so. It was, yeah. it was great. And talking with you last time and knowing how you, you start out with the story and then kind of go from there just seemed really important. So thank you so much for clearing that up for me. That's awesome. That needs yeah, to be. You, you nailed it. That needs to be a whole a whole series. <laughs> Get myself some anime. Let's go on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Should we, are you, are you tired of talking about AI and stuff? I know, you know, you're probably tired I mean, of about it. I think yeah, it, I it, we'll have to mention it. So here, here's my take on it. I don't know if you, I'm, I can't, when it came out, when Green Glass came out, um, I read the disclaimer under the video and I read the disclaimer ahead of the video. And to me, like, well, okay, they want to be really clear what's going on. And it, you are very clear with what's going on, and I appreciated that. And then it seems like everybody saw AI, and they're like, I don't want to read anymore. This is offensive and bullshit. Yeah, <laughs> and, basically. <laughs> <laughs> I hated seeing that because you, kind of, you, you tried to be so clear, you know. <laughs> Has anybody apologized for overreacting? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, no, obviously not. Yeah. But um, those that... Um, that did react that way uh, were like that just because AI, it's just AI. It doesn't yeah. matter what, in what capacity. It's just, they don't like AI. So there's not, you know, there's no winning there. So well, we're just not even, not even going to try. No, I mean, there's people, they use AI all the time. They don't even realize it. They've been using it for years. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. You're already yeah. in it, man. I saw that comment <clears throat> on Instagram when someone was like, uh, it was like, our, yay, the album is out. What do you think? Someone was just like, sorry, can't touch anything to do with AI. And then the first comment was like, well, get off the internet then. Right. Yeah. Don't <laughs> like, Google a damn thing. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, yep, pretty much. And they're like, no, no, I'm not talking about that kind of AI. And it's like, okay, why not? What's the difference? Yeah. It's not, it's not going anywhere. That's the point no. I kind of tell people. It's like, it's not going anywhere and it's going to be used. So you better figure out how to, you know, get along with, it, I guess. Mm -hmm. No, people don't want to. So that's, but that's, you can't, you can't force anyone to do anything. So that's just the way it is. Right. Yeah. Sadly. Yeah. So, okay. So this, you used, um, original artwork to train for that, for the video. I think it was awesome. Like the, how, thank you. Cause how, how the AI works is you, I don't know. I'm just, what I've learned is like, if you, if you train it on images, it will take, it will fill in its own blanks between images and between space and stuff. So the, the constant morphing that was going on during that video, I think was kind of a byproduct of, of it being done by AI, but it really lent yeah. to the whole, to the whole idea anyway. Yes, yeah, exactly. Just, Cause you could freeze frame it and you could get five, six different shots of the same character yeah. with all these different details. It was so neat. Yeah. Especially when the whole premise of the story was exactly that. It just baffled me how people could <laughs> be outraged by it. No, I mean, really? It's, I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm learning to not be surprised by humanity at all anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, how about recording? Did anything, uh, was it kind of business as usual? Did you try anything new, uh, for recording the album? No. Yeah. Business as usual. Business I mean, that's, usual. that's not true. We, we recorded it ourselves, which we've never done before. Oh, nice. And so that was intense. <laughs> so it was Andy behind the board the whole time. Wow. And uh, he's really good at that stuff. He, he does it, you know, for his own projects. And like, that's basically what his Twitch streams are. It's just him recording himself. And so he's like, yeah, no, I think I can do this. But the problem was, is that we just didn't allot enough time for it because wow it's not just about recording yourself, right? It's about all the other stuff in the background, putting everything together, comping it, taking the takes and cleaning them up and making sure there's no blips, pops and whatever's and, you know, all that sort of stuff. And you got to like listen through every track. And, um, and he just didn't have the time to do that because he was trying to record himself and everybody else right. as well. So then he was doing like, seriously, like 20 hour days, you know, that whole time. And, um, and it was, uh, it was definitely an intense undertaking. And we have learned a huge lesson from that, which is let Andy sit in the producer's chair, not in the engineer's chair. There's yeah. a very big difference. Um, so we'll probably do that in the future. But um, yeah, other than that, yeah, exactly. No, we, exactly the same way we always do things. You'll keep going forward this way with, with taking over production for your own stuff, your own albums. 
I think so. Yeah. And then we send it to Jacob and he does his mix and master. He does production as well. You know, there's things that he, he throws in there. He's really good at vocals. Like he just knows when to make something echo, you know, when to add more reverb, when to clean this up, you know, that this, that, or the other, he's really great at all that. So, and I'm sure there's things that he does for guitars as well that I just don't notice, but I notice the vocal stuff. (laughs) I'm constantly like, Hey, that wasn't in there. I was like, you added that. Um, (laughs) And, uh, and so, yeah, we, you know, we love what he does and we love how he transforms the record. So, you know, as long as he's doesn't get too busy cause he's skyrocketing into stardom right now. Uh-oh. It's like everybody, everybody <laughs> is going to him. So hopefully he'll be able to squeeze us in in the future. But, um, yeah, I think we'll try and we'll, we'll try and smooth out the, the recording process side right. of things ourselves. Yeah. seems like you, if you find a great producer, that's awesome. If you have somebody within your crew that you trust then there's that's just less that's one less hurdle mm-hmm. exactly to deal with you know yeah for sure and i can't <laughs> i do my own stuff and like it gets it, it's maddening with like a mm-hmm. small amount of tracks and instruments i can't imagine what the production you guys have it's just so many levels and layers of music going on yeah and you still got to pay like for the studio time and stuff too so because you can't fit a drum kit in it Andrew's little stream room. Right. So. <laughs> Freaking drummers, man. <laughs> yeah. They have the most stuff. <laughs> yeah. Uh, listening to the album, I made a little notice that it makes, it makes me want to be a better songwriter. And uh, I'm worried that I'm going to get lost in my new music. I already have written having wanted to, wanted to go back and kind of be like, Oh, Oh, things, things I heard. There's so many different little, little things you hear in the background and it makes me want to be better. So I'm, I guess That's it's just great. a compliment. You know what I mean? It's yeah, like, all right, good, good enough isn't good enough. <laughs> Make no, it. that's not true. That's not true. Well, I, I guess what I mean is like, uh, if like if you think it can be better, then you should probably just keep going. I don't. Yeah, you know, there's a fine line there because you can sit there and edit a song forever. Uh, yeah, you know, we've true. definitely fallen into that trap before where we write a demo and we're like okay yeah cool and then we're like listening to it and it's like yeah well maybe we should do this here and they're like yeah yeah okay cool cool and then you listen to it like well maybe you know what i mean and it's like three months later the song's still not written and it's just like just finish the song let's just let's stop making changes you know it's like like knowing knowing when to quit is is a exactly (laughs) exactly Yeah. yeah like knowing how to end a song is just as important as knowing how to start one (laughs) see more, more stuff to think about, right? <laughs> Number of tracks per song. Do you have any idea how many, like, uh, layers <laughs> and tracks you have? Because it's got to be just, now it can be uh, endless, you know. Well, we were going through uh, Seeking Vengeance, yeah. and Andrew had the the set the Pro Tools session up on his computer. And um, he was just, like, scrolling. He's like, where's the guitar? Where? <laughs> it was so funny. He was just like, oh, here. Oh, no, wrong guitar. And it's just like, oh, my goodness. I don't even know. 300? I don't <laughs> oh even know. God. Yeah. Where's it's pretty funny. I was like, Wait, how come you don't have them, like, all together? I was like, I'd have them, like, I, but this is me and my OCT. I'd have them, like, drums guitar all the guitars and yeah. then that all they'd all be color coordinated and and it would be like you know first it would be rhythm guitars and then leads and then solos and you know what i mean and like it would yeah. just be be pretty little rainbow stacks everywhere <laughs> <laughs> I, I end up going back and then I, I get done with a bunch of stuff and i don't like i, I realize i didn't label any of them it's like oh no <laughs> yep that happens i do label. that when i'm writing when i'm writing my demos it's always Okay, I use this track for main, so it's just called main, and then it's like main two, and then like main three, <laughs> and then I put right them all side melody part. Yeah, exactly. Then I put them all together so that there's only one main, so that it's like whenever I'm like referring back to the demo to start doing lyrics and things like that, or writing the harmonies, then I always know because like okay, all these tracks up here are garbage that were used to write the main, but this is the this yeah. is the one right here. You know, and then I, and then I do the lyrics, and then I do the harmonies, and so I'm always very, very uh, cognizant of keeping my my session tidy so that I don't get confused. And then exactly, so I can go back and be like, okay, yeah, no, this was what I did here, or whatever, and that's nice and easy to see. And okay, so harmony one, harmony two, and oh look, this channel's panned all the way to the left, so that's like the harmony, you know, the top harmony or whatever, you know, that kind of thing. So. 
It's important yeah. to keep a tidy session, everyone. It is. Listen, definitely, because you go in, and if you, <clears throat> I do that too. I'll record one track, and if I go to record a, another part to it, I'll do it on another one, so I can kind of eventually put them into one. But yeah, mm -hmm. sometimes it gets gets confusing. Well, it's just easier, like when you're doing takes and stuff. New track, new new take, right. new track, new take, new track. And then once you've you know kind of got it all sorted, then you put it all into one. For sure. And then you save the final recording. Then you save final two. <laughs> final two, three. I don't think I ever call anything final because I right. know I'm always going to go there. <laughs> you know it's a lie as soon as you say it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Is there anything ever you guys ever write where you're like, how, how are we going to do this? Or how are we going to pull it off? Live, I guess. Because studio and lives is very whole different animal. Mm -hmm, for sure. Um, I mean, normally I'm really very aware of that and I try not to do anything that I have trouble with. Um, but there was just a few points on this album where, um, just to kind of get like the phrasing mm. to sound right, it was like just nonstop. And I'm like, how the heck? Okay. That phrase is like, you know, 23 bars. Just no <laughs> how am breathe. I going to do that without <laughs> breathing? Uh, so that I'm learning currently as we speak how to do um i figured out like i did that in soulbound on the last record and so i figured out how to put like a tiny breath in there um and so i figured that out with seeking vengeance as well that that one's i've got the chorus of seeking vengeance is just like a, like it never stops you know so yeah. um i think i've got it i think i've got it sorted but normally i try not to do that and i think the boys have the same opinion it's kind of like, don't write things that you, you can't play live. Yeah. Can I play this never, once? Sure. You might. Can I you play might it every, end up playing. Even can if I it's play like. It every night? <laughs> yes, exactly. Even if it's like, I know this is never going to be a single, just don't do that to yourself. You got to push, you got to push yourself, but you also got to be smart. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So is there any like hot tub specials as far as uh, songwriting goes? <laughs> <laughs> or was it all um, was it all out of the hot tub <laughs> <laughs> it was the whole session we were in the hot tub oh my god we didn't even leave the hot tub no. yeah that's um no, that's on the drums. yeah <laughs> no that's important um to have a hot tub in your airbnb whenever you're where wherever you record because i don't know what it is about being in the water don't do you not find this when you like are in the shower in the morning your brain just like Oh, yeah. turns into like hyper mode and you get super creative i think it's because your body just kind of goes like ooh, and turns off and your brain is just like oh i don't have to think about all this stuff like you know i've got room to move and room to be creative so yeah no we definitely thought of a lot of things in the hot tub um with our margaritaville next to us as well so that's why nice. there was some <laughs> There's some straight out of the, you know, the literal Margaritaville song uh, in the album. And um, <laughs> um, some music video ideas, of course. We have a whole bunch kind of piled up now that, nice. um, that we need to make happen. But the, it's funny because all of our music video ideas are always like the funny ones and like the, yeah. the us being stupid. <laughs> so it's like, well, this is a serious song. We can't use that. We've got to have a real music video for this one. <laughs> and, then, and then when it comes to be like, okay, well, what do we do for like a serious music video? We're all like, oh, <laughs> let RuneGate, <laughs> let RuneGate figure it out. <laughs> um, but yeah, so definitely, yeah, a lot of ideas from the hot tub. But I mean, usually we're, we're of the mind that, that um, the whole album should be written before we get in there because it's, we just can't, you know, got to save the money. And, um, but, but Blood Empress was written in the, in, not in the studio, but in the Airbnb, like the night before we hit the studio. Wow. Um, so we all showed up on the, the Saturday, I think the Saturday before going in on the Monday. And so we were like, all right, let's sit down tonight and write this song. Cause we always want to have like a song at the end that we save okay. for like a reflection of where we're at in that moment, the exact moment that we record, because everything else is written so far before, you know, we have you know, demos That's floating around for like years before we actually hit the studio. So um, we were just like, okay, let's write Blood Empress together. And, uh, and so it was just kind of this, yeah, the, the ideas that we came up with over, you know, a, a case of beer in an Airbnb. <laughs> so I was like, 
Is that really the greatest idea? I don't know, but that's what happened. Well, it came out pretty <laughs> awesome. So that the like the whole thing. Oh yeah, beginning to end, it was just us singing singing guitar riffs at Andy. You know, what about something like wow, 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 you know? And he's like, "What you mean, like this?" You know, and then that's exactly it. It's just oh, that's great. Yeah. And that's awesome. Mm -hmm. So you got you got you try and do that every every album. You got to have one mm -hmm. where it's like, let's just figure it out. Apex was like that. Afterlife was like that as well. Afterlife, Andrew had the. The sort of folky sym symphony part already. He was just like, "This is what we start with here," and then. But it was everything after that where it was kind of like he's wow. like, "I got a few riffs. I got this idea. I got this idea," and, and we all just put it together at the end. Um, and then afterlife, yeah, it was very similar. Just a few awesome. riffs when we went in there and we finished it all together. Oh, sorry, Apex. That's great. That's cool to know that that's uh because every, everything seems like it's completely. It's all, I mean, obviously it's planned out. You work perfectly studio, planned, <laughs> perfectly planned and executed. It's nice to know it's like, yeah, you know, we can just hash it out and come out with a freaking masterpiece the <laughs> next day. That's awesome. We just don't like to do the whole thing like that because that's just too much pressure. And then also, I find that you probably just write the same thing, you know, that's like the headspace that we were at at that moment. It was like us going into like, hard work but also party mode you know because we were we were all about to live in a, in a house together we love yeah. doing that so it, it was like that a little snapshot of that moment um but then we don't want a whole album of that yeah so it's i think it's important i just don't understand how bands can do that right the whole record in the studio <clears throat> live like that it's just like ah how do you not get caught up in doing the same thing over and over again but they you know they do it they figure it out oh i i I did order a CD and a fanny pack because uh, I'm going to Japan in, in June, and a fanny pack would be perfect. Nice. They're still they're still cool over there. So, dude, fan, these fanny packs are rad. I'm just gonna say <laughs> they got so many pockets. You can do it as like a crossbody bag if you want to, and um, and they are really nice, like embroidered logo on the front and everything. Awesome. And um, yeah, we we spent a lot of time and energy on those curating them just for you so we're Fantastic. we all we all got uh, uh one for ourselves yeah. as well. <laughs> i appreciate it i can't wait to open it in front of my wife and have her be like what i'm like trust me this is gonna be awesome i'm sorry you're a fanny pack guy now oh my god <laughs> what happened to you i'm not going out with you like that <laughs> right i'll just wear it in japan <laughs> you say that now, but right. you might grow accustomed. I'm be like, this is to it. this is so useful. <laughs> Why haven't I been doing this since the right. '80s? <laughs> <laughs> totally. Uh, Grant and Andrew like to call them chaos pouches. Oh, so if that makes yeah. you if that makes you feel better about it, that's what I'm going to call it. Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, any good books lately? Have you had time to read anything? Oh my God, no. Um, but <laughs> also there was a little while in there where I was like forcing myself and I wrote, uh, wrote, re read the Broken Earth trilogy. Oh no. Hold on. Ah, yay. There we go. Okay. Um, what were we talking about? Sorry. No, I forgot. Books? You're making yourself oh, yes. read? The Broken Earth trilogy by N.K. Jemison. It's so good. And I just... I knew that it was good because Scott had read it like some years ago and had talked nonstop about it. And I was just like, yes, yes, I'll read it. I'll read it. Um, and I started the first book and it was awesome. And I was just like, oh, yes. And then I had all three because, uh, uh, you know, I'm all about collecting the, the series. And so I had them already lined up, ready to go. And I just absolutely tore through them. They were really cool. Such a cool magic system and just a really neat um view on earth but it's kind of like an alternate earth it's really yeah it was just fantastic i'm so glad that i that i finally read that and then now i'm into um the second trilogy from um the the oh, what's it called the first law trilogy by joe abercrombie okay. he did like a, a second sort of trilogy but it's like three standalone stories from the people in that universe so i'm i'm in the middle of that now as well and and then, of course, I have like a million other things on the go. Uh, so, what just, was the first the first author you mentioned? Uh, N. K. Jemison, and she wrote the. It's called the Broken Earth trilogy, but the first one is called um, 
I know there's stone sky and oh, it's like right here on the shelf. Okay. Of course, this the stone sky is the one that's right there. But cool, fifth cool. Season. The fifth season. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we have a small library started in our house. My wife likes to get series of books. She has to get the whole series. Of course, she'll get a book. Of like, oh, this is part of a series. I'm like, how many series do you still have to read? But it doesn't matter. We get the books anyway. Absolutely. I know, right? The TBR shelf is <laughs> never ending. That's what our room is. It's a 2B red room. Right. But I, it's it's a great album. And Thank I you. think your your the artwork and the videos and everything were just great. It was cool to go through the album song by song and really kind of, it's different Dissect when you're just listening it. to it. But yeah, yeah, stop, pause, and look at the lyrics and be like, okay, what exactly is going on? So it's, <laughs> it's just a it's movie awesome. going through my head that I was like, what was that movie? I was like, oh, no, that's just that album I was listening to. From <laughs> <the Archers." laughs> yes, that's awesome. I love that. That's great. <laughs> I feel like that with video games sometimes where I'm like, was I in the middle of a movie? Oh, no, I just really <laughs> want to sit down and play, you know, Doom again. Like, let's go. <laughs> I need to see you guys in concert. I had tickets to a show. I think it was Toronto a while ago, and I ended up, I wasn't able to go. Oh, that's too bad. So that was a bummer. We have the uh, Power Wolf tour coming in, in August and September. That's right. That's right. Yeah. All the tour dates are on our website. Okay. Check out the website. I will, I'll link it. Thank you so right. much. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. It's it's pleasure good to, to see be you here. again. I'm um, looking forward Thank to you. more music. Get started on the next album. Oh, it's, we already are. <laughs> Fantastic. You don't have to tell me. <laughs> That's what I like to hear. It won't be four years this time, hopefully. We're good. <laughs> Thanks, Ryan. Thanks a lot, Brittany. No worries. Bye. Bye.